So, hello everyone, and thanks for joining us here today to talk about IFRA's work with the Internet Governance Forum. We're going to try and summarise five days of meetings and about a billion web pages and still leave time for questions at the end. So, this is going to be quite an ambitious one. You'll be glad to hear, I hope, that this presentation, as well as the recording, will also be available on our website after we finish. So, first question, why does the internet, manage, why does the internet matter for libraries? The fact that you've dialled into this webinar suggests that you don't need to be convinced that the internet and the way it works is important for our institutions. It can be argued that libraries are the original internet, a network sharing and giving access to information for the benefit of all. Indeed, libraries were early pioneers in connecting up information and computers for services such as interlibrary loan. Today, the internet is increasingly indispensable for access to information not just because a growing share of information is digital, but because newspapers and journals that used to be printed are now online only. Information is held in the cloud or on someone else's server, not in the library. Without a connection, there's no access to information. The importance of this connection to the internet and of the ability to use it was highlighted in the Development and Access to Information report. This was produced by IFLA in partnership with the Technology, Technology and Social Change Group at the University of Washington earlier this year. The report underlined that meaningful access to information is essential to delivering development across the board, but as you can see from the table on the screen, we are far from even ensuring connectivity for all. So libraries have a major stake in ensuring that the internet works and is accessible for all in order to achieve our missions. Who decides how the internet works? It's important to note that we're talking about governance, not government. States do have an important role. They can set regulations, build or cut cables, promote education, and of course fund and support libraries. But given that the internet works across borders, other actors are important. The biggest internet businesses have a greater market value than many countries. The way they act, and can make others act, can have a huge impact. Also, internet service providers in particular can control what comes through cables or signals to our homes. They need to be brought into the discussion as well. But of course, civil society and users are also vital. The internet was designed to empower people and make them producers rather than just consumers of information. While some worry that the internet has lost sight of its original mission, Others continue to look for ways to make the internet into an enabler of personal growth and development. All of these actors are present at the Internet Governance Forum. With the internet playing such an important role in all aspects of our lives, it's not a surprise that Internet Governance Forum meetings cover an ambitious range of subjects. There are technical specialists discussing regulation and standards. There are those looking at the economics of the internet and how it can help create new businesses and facilitate trade. Cybersecurity and how to deal with criminal content remains a major priority, not least that many risk using it as an excuse to apply tough restrictions on the web. Others take a more positive outlook, thinking about how the internet can help achieve social objectives and give strength to marginalized groups. Finally, there are discussions about governance, how decisions are taken at all levels about how, the way the internet works. All of these actors come together at internet governance discussions and all of these subjects. These are not only an opportunity to network and build up relations with partners, but also to influence the thinking of those who make decisions. Many of them are potential partners for libraries locally and nationally. Some may run projects or distribute fund financing. Others make laws. So what's the library angle on all this? As set out earlier, Clearly, as access to information becomes dependent on the internet, libraries have an interest in an internet that works. So therefore, IFLA comes at the internet governance debate from three different angles, connected libraries and communities, open internet infrastructure, and empowered users. The next three slides will look at each of these main areas of engagement. The first, connected libraries and communities, is all about getting libraries online, and in doing so, helping communities to access all that the internet can offer. As highlighted earlier, the costs of being unconnected are growing. The digital divide risks all too easily becoming an economic, a social, and even a democratic divide. 
Connecting libraries to the internet is therefore a vital first step. As the IFLA library map of the world shows, rates of connection still vary strongly. It will also tend to be the hardest libraries to connect, those that are remote or in poorer areas that will be the last to get online. But we need to do this. Fortunately, at the same time, the cost of connection is falling. Technology is improving rapidly. New techniques are emerging, dedicating unused radio spectrum, for example which offer new means of giving people access. Once libraries themselves are connected, they can in turn serve the community through providing public access and relevant training on the premises, but also as hubs for community networks. The principles on public access in libraries, agreed and led by IFLA in 2015, set out some key points to consider. In addition to getting the right infrastructure, policy, copyright laws, accessibility, skills development and content provision all need to be borne in mind. Working with partners at the Internet Governance Forum provides an opportunity to encourage governments and donors to see providing public access through libraries as a cost-effective means of getting the next billions of people online. However, connection isn't everything. As already mentioned, both governments and private players can influence what you see online. This stretches from simple blocking or censorship of sites, and in its most extreme form, shutting down the internet altogether, to more subtle strategies. Changing the order of search results, or hiding certain ones, showing particular posts on Facebook to influence moods, limiting what users can do with the content they find. IFLA has already made statements both on net neutrality and internet shutdowns. We've argued that blocking or slowing access to information in a disproportionate and or unfriendly, unfairly discriminatory manner is wrong. In the case of net neutrality, it is smaller firms, individuals, and of course libraries, who will not be able to pay for their own content to be prioritised. In the case of internet shutdowns, the costs to general welfare are likely to be much greater than any gains. IFLA also defends the human rights of free speech and free access to information, notably through the work of our advisory committee on freedom of access to information and freedom of expression. When people are not allowed to express themselves online or fear that they may be under surveillance or at risk of persecution, there cannot be the free debate and sharing of ideas that the internet promises. Finally, and connected with the importance of free expression is copyright. The digital transition has both created new possibilities to share, create and apply content and new ways of preventing this. Technological protection measures and the use of contract terms to take away possibilities created by exceptions and limitations to copyright are all serious issues. For IFLA, the Internet Governance Forum is an opportunity to make sure that the rights of library users are reflected in the broader debate. Security and economic factors are important, but for the internet to realize its full potential, all voices must be heard. Finally, we have empowered users, how to develop digital literacies. Even in those countries where there is good connectivity and rich content in the local language, too many people remain offline or are not making use of the possibilities they have. Libraries, by providing public access, as we've mentioned, clearly have an important role. But so too do the skills, knowledge, attitudes and behaviours necessary to become a confident and proficient internet user. As set out in our statement on digital literacy earlier this year, libraries can be a key player here. In many countries, they are providing vital help to people who may not have other options. They offer everything from the most basic computer skills to developing more sophisticated capacities, such as the ability to spot fake news. They do this through formal courses, informal drop-ins, and simply by providing a welcoming environment. The IGF2 is a great opportunity to connect libraries with the many other actors and programs out there developing tools and practices on digital literacy. It is an important moment too to underline that this literacy must be provided in a way that allows people to develop as whole citizens and thrive online. Digital literacy is also the only sustainable response to many of the challenges encountered online today. No regulation will be quick enough or filter accurate enough to deal effectively with misinformation or other harmful content online. Only skilled, empowered users can do this, and libraries can help make them. 
So what's IFLA doing at IGF 2017? We have a busy program. And we've already been busy throughout the year with IFLA representatives attending all regional meetings of the Internet Governance Forum in Panama in August, in Africa early this month, in Asia Oceania in July and in Europe in May. We'll be organising a session at the IGF itself of the Dynamic Coalition on Public Access and Libraries, an alliance of NGOs which have recognised and are promoting the importance of public access. In this, we'll talk not just about the importance of public access, but also about the policies that are needed to make it work. This will be taking place at 10.30 on, 11, on, 10.30 on Tuesday morning, 19th of December. We'll also have speakers, we'll have speakers there who will discuss the experience of the Pacific, Latin America and Africa, drawing out lessons that we'll be sharing at a plenary session later in the week. We'll also be talking about public access and digital literacy in an event organised by the Institute of Electronic and en Electrical Engineers on Sunday. We'll be brainstorming with major NGOs, businesses and aid agencies there and throughout the week. We'll be looking at how libraries can develop digital literacy in young people. We'll be holding a flash session on digital preservation. And we'll be there talking about libraries, underlining the importance of our institutions at many other sessions highlighting and making sure that as many people as possible recognize the work that you our members are doing so how can you follow us throughout the week firstly on twitter we'll be putting things up on ifla and i'll be putting them up on my personal twitter feed which you have here secondly we'll be putting things up on facebook as well if you click on the link in the presentation which we'll share you can get to this and finally we'll be making sure that every day we produce a blog so keep an eye, look out at the Library Policy and Advocacy blog in order to find out more about what we've been doing and what we've been seeing. So that's it for the, that's for my presentation. Are there any questions? And please feel free to use the chat box in order to ask these. Okay, I think that clearly answered all of the questions. So in which case, thank you again for joining the webinar. Um, we will put the presentation and the script and the link to the recording up online as soon as possible. And therefore, and please do not hesitate to get in touch by email or however else if you have any further questions that you think of afterwards. Thank you very much.